This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, horror, sci-fi film called Pitch Black. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The transport ship, Hunter Gratzner, drifts into space carrying 40 passengers to the Tangier system. All passengers are in cryosleep, except for the notorious criminal Richard Riddick. Law enforcement officer, William J. Johns, is escorting him back to prison, but his plans are derailed when debris from a comet hits their ship. The crew soon wakes up from cryosleep, but the captain is immediately killed by the debris before he can get out of his pod. Carolyn Fry, the docking pilot, and Greg Owens, the navigator, learn that they're crashing into an unknown planet, so they try to take control of the ship and send a distress signal. Carolyn purges sections of the ship to slow down their descent, and as the ship keeps going into freefall, Carolyn prepares to expel the passenger cabin, but Greg realizes what she's doing and blocks the airlock doors to stop her. As the ship crashes to the surface, Johns gets out of his stasis pod. The passenger cabin breaks apart, and parts of the ship fly off as it slides to the ground, so Johns hangs on to a post. When the vessel finally stops, the survivors leave their pods and call out to their companions. Johns learns that Riddick managed to escape from his pod, so he looks for the convict below the passenger cabin. Riddick emerges and tries to strangle Johns with his feet, but Johns breaks free from his grip and subdues him. While searching for other survivors, the passengers find a stowaway boy named Jack. Carolyn soon discovers that Greg has been impaled by a metal rod, a passenger named Shaza warns her not to pull out the rod because it's too close to Greg's heart. Carolyn asks them to retrieve the anastaphine from the back of the cabin, but they note that the section of the ship is gone. Carolyn instructs all the passengers to leave her with Greg so that she can spend their last few moments alone. Later, the passengers check the cargo for food and water, but they only find bottles of wine in a sarcophagus owned by an antique dealer, Paris Ogilvy, Imam Abu al-Walid is accompanying three Muslim boys, notes that the wine won't help them because they're not allowed to drink alcohol, especially during the Hajj. Johns points out that there's nothing else to drink, but Al-Walid asserts that water is just waiting to be found in the desert. Riddick is handcuffed to a post on another section of the ship, but he escapes upon noticing that the top of the post is shattered. Johns soon learns about Riddick's escape and finds part of his handcuff in the desert, so he immediately assembles a team to chase after him. Outside the ship, Jack, Shaza, and her companion, Zeke, create breathing aids to help them inhale more oxygen. Carolyn asks Al-Walid to come with her to look for water before the planet's two suns go down. Before they can head out, they discover that it will never be dark on the planet because there's a third sun rising in the opposite direction of the setting suns. Johns figures out that Riddick is heading toward the rising blue sun because the convict left his handcuff in the opposite direction to mislead him. Carolyn, Johns, Al-Walid, and the Muslim boys, Ali, Hassan, and Suleiman soon head toward the rising sun to recapture Riddick and look for water. While looking through the telescope, John sees some trees in the distance and figures out that there must be water nearby. When they get close, they discover that the structures are part of the skeletal remains of a gigantic animal. They see more bones scattered on the ground, so Al-Walid surmises that it's a communal graveyard. While resting outside the skeletal remains, Carolyn confesses that she almost dumped the passenger cabin during the crash, but Greg stopped her. Carolyn and Johns are oblivious that Riddick is hiding in the dark inside the skeleton with a knife in his hand. As they conclude their conversation, Riddick carefully cuts a lock of Carolyn's hair and sniffs it. The group soon goes on their way and comes across an abandoned mining settlement. Carolyn goes inside one of the buildings and tries to activate the lights with her voice, but nothing happens. When she finds a solar-powered Ori, she realizes that there are no lights on the planet because it never goes dark. When she goes back outside, Carolyn starts screaming for joy upon finding a dropship. Back at the crash site, Paris, Shaza, and Jack hear strange noises coming from the back of the ship. When they see someone approaching, they immediately hide and prepare to defend themselves. Shaza almost attacks the man when he gets close, but they discover that he's one of the survivors. Zeke shoots the man, thinking that he's Riddick. He soon realizes his mistake, but it's too late. Zeke drags the man's body to the mass grave he dug for the dead passengers. Suddenly, something pulls Zeke inside, so he repeatedly fires his gun. Shaza hears the gunshot, so she immediately runs towards the mass grave. 
When she uncovers the mass grave, she finds blood near the hole and sees Riddick in front of her. Riddick flees, but Johns intercepts him and grabs his goggles that protect his eyes from the daylight. Before Johns locks him up, Shaza beats him, thinking that he's responsible for Zeke's disappearance. Later, Carolyn asks Riddick what he did to Zeke's body, but Riddick only tells her that he's not the one that they should be worried about. Jack asks how he got his eyes, so Riddick explains that he was sent to prison where he never saw daylight. When he got out, he paid a doctor to perform surgery on his eyes to allow him to see in the dark. Riddick assures Carolyn that he didn't kill Zeke, so she decides to find Zeke's body in the hole. With a rope tied around her waist, Carolyn crawls into the hole and comes across a cavern with holes on top. As she looks around, a creature moves quietly around her. Soon, Carolyn finds Zeke's severed foot. She also discovers creatures lurking around the cave, so she immediately climbs a hole to get out, but something pulls her rope. Jack hears her screaming for help while others are still waiting for her by the hole in the grave. Soon, Johns breaks through the wall and pulls Carolyn out, and as she attempts to walk away, something pulls Carolyn back into the cave. So, they immediately cut the rope. Realizing that Riddick was telling the truth, Johns unchains Riddick on the condition that he gives up his weapons and follows his orders. Riddick manages to grab John's weapon, but he hands it back to him instead of killing him. The group soon heads to the settlement to bring a power cell for the dropship. When they arrive, Carolyn discovers that they need five more power cells. Meanwhile, Jack, who has an unhealthy fascination with Riddick, shaves his head and wears a pair of goggles to look more like him. As the group refreshes themselves with water from the moisture machine, Ollie looks around the coring room. The group starts discussing why the mining team left the site, but Riddick contends that they all died there because their belongings are all still there. Suddenly, the roof of the coring room opens, causing bat-like creatures to scatter due to the sunlight. The creatures start attacking Ali, so he runs to another room to hide. Upon hearing Ali's screams, the others break into the coring room. When Al-Walid opens one of the doors, hundreds of creatures fly out and head to a mine shaft. Not long, Al-Walid sees Ali's mangled body drop to the ground. While Al-Walid buries the boy, the others drop a flare to the shaft and discover the human bones scattered at the bottom. Riddick realizes that the miners hid from the creatures in the coring room because the doors are secure, but they forgot to cover the shaft. Johns points out that the creatures seem inclined to stay in the dark, so he notes that all they have to do is stay in the daylight. Carolyn notices that the last sample taken from the shaft was dated 22 years ago and surmises that it must be significant. She then uses the orrery and discovers an eclipse that covers the planet in total darkness every 22 years. Carolyn tells Johns that they have to get the power cells from the crashed ship, but Johns advises her to wait because Riddick might hijack the ship. Johns discloses to Carolyn that Riddick can fly a ship, so he suggests bringing the cells at the last minute so Riddick won't have a chance to hijack them. Later, Riddick approaches Carolyn and hints that Johns cannot be trusted because he's not a real law enforcement agent. Riddick notes that he might wear a badge and a uniform, but Johns is just a bounty hunter. He then claims that Johns refuses to kill him because he'll get more money if he captures Riddick alive. Carolyn notes that she's not going to turn on Johns no matter what he says, so Riddick makes one final attempt to cast doubt about Johns' character by hinting about his drug addiction. Carolyn soon confronts Johns and finds him injecting morphine into his eye. Johns argues that his morphine use is not a problem, but Carolyn points out that he could have given him a vial to ease Greg's pain when he was dying. Johns discloses that he uses morphine because Riddick stabbed him near his spinal cord and left a piece of the shiv inside. When they finish arguing, the group finds out that the eclipse is starting, so they immediately drive the solar-powered buggy back to the crash site to retrieve the power cells. It soon gets dark after their arrival, as another planet's rings cover the two suns. Guns. Not long, many squealing bat-like creatures fly out of spires in the distance. The group runs to the cargo hold as the creatures fly towards them. The creatures arrive before Riddick and Shaza can reach the cargo hold, so they drop to the ground to avoid them. Shaza soon gets up to continue running, but Riddick stays on the ground. The flying beasts return to attack Shaza and carry her away. When Riddick reaches the cargo hold, he looks in the distance and sees more creatures flying out of the spires. The group hides deeper into the cargo hold when a creature pierces the wall with its claws. While the others cut through the walls to find other rooms, Riddick sees a creature feasting on something in the dark. Hassan joins Riddick as the creature finishes its meal. Riddick advises Hassan to stay still, 
and instructs Carolyn to continue using the cutting torch on the walls. Hassan runs away in panic when the creature approaches, but another one emerges from the dark and kills him. As more creatures emerge, Riddick runs towards the others, but he drops to the ground when they shine light in his eyes. The creature chasing him gets burned when the light hits its skin, so it tries to flee, but Johns manages to shoot it. As they continue shining a torch on the dying creature, they discover that it's vulnerable to light. The group later makes plans to return to the dropship on foot because they can't use the buggy. All will lead notes that the orrery indicates that the eclipse will last long, so waiting for the suns to come out is not an option. Soon, they return to the ship's main cabin to retrieve the power cells and take all the light that they can carry. Riddick tells the group to check themselves for deep cuts because the creatures can smell blood. Soon, they head back to the mining settlement, dragging the batteries while Riddick leads the way. The beasts follow them, but they can't get too close because of the lights around them. Paris accidentally drops a flashlight, so Jack attempts to retrieve it. When the creatures start coming after them, Paris crawls away in panic and drags one of the batteries with him. As a result, the glowing tubes connected to the batteries go out, leaving the group open to an attack. Soon, a creature stabs Paris, so he takes a last sip of wine from his flask, holds a lighter in front of his face, and spits it out. The burst of flame startles the creatures surrounding him, but they feast on him moments later. When they come across a canyon, Riddick realizes they need to find another way, because the creatures will sense that a girl is bleeding. The group is puzzled because Carolyn is not wounded, so Riddick reveals that Jack is actually a girl. Jack reveals that she pretended to be a boy so people would stop messing with her. Carolyn suggests returning to the crash site, but Johns objects and tells the group that Carolyn tried to purge the passenger cabin to get them on his side. As they continue heading to the settlement, John speaks privately with Riddick and suggests killing someone to use the body as bait and keep the creatures off their scent. When Johns asks him to kill Jack, Riddick argues that they might need someone bigger. The two men end up fighting when Johns realizes that he's going to be the bait. Riddick pulls out his shiv and advises Johns to stay in the light while attempting to cut him. Johns manages to knock him down and grab his shiv, but Riddick overpowers him. Riddick takes back his weapon and uses it to slash Johns back. Johns loads his firearm, but Riddick disappears in the dark by the time that he's ready to shoot. As he searches for Riddick, a creature impales him and bites off his head. Riddick reunites with the group and advises them to keep heading towards the settlement. When he tells them that Johns is dead, Jack starts to cry, but Riddick tells her not to mourn for him. The survivors run through the canyon while keeping Jack in the middle to prevent the creatures from detecting her. Riddick follows them closely while dragging the power cells behind him. A swarm flies towards them, but the creatures can't attack because of the lights. As they continue running, Carolyn sees some of the creatures fighting each other. While passing through a gigantic skeleton, a creature grabs Suleiman's leg. They manage to fend off the beast by lighting the fuel that Suleiman dropped on the ground. Riddick moves on while the others tend to Suleiman's wounds. Jack tries to follow him, but a creature attacks her. Riddick hesitates to go back to help, but he eventually charges towards the beast to fight it off. After struggling for a while, Riddick manages to pull out his knife and slash the creature's flesh until it dies. As they press on, it suddenly starts raining, so they have no choice but to stop and find cover to protect their torches. While Riddick contemplates their next move, a creature grabs Suleiman and disappears to the top of the cliff. Later, Riddick takes them to a cave and seals the opening to keep them safe. Afterward, Riddick goes off on his own and soon reaches the settlement. Back in the cave, the fuel for their last torch eventually runs out, but they find glowing insects on the walls. They put all the insects they can find in empty bottles to make new lamps, worried that Riddick might leave without them. Carolyn gets out of the cave and heads to the settlement. When she arrives, she finds Riddick preparing to fly the dropship. Riddick opens the dropship and asks Carolyn to leave the others behind. Carolyn hesitantly goes inside the ship, but she soon comes to her senses and lunges at Riddick to assert her authority as the ship's captain. She then stresses that she won't leave anyone behind. Riddick then subdues her and asks her if she's willing to risk her life for Jack and Al-Walid. When Carolyn tells him that she's willing to die for them, Riddick goes back to the cave with her to fetch them. On their way back to the dropship, the group encounters several creatures blocking their way, but they're able to move past them when they find an opening. Carolyn, Jack, and Al-Walid soon reach the ship, but Riddick is left to deal with the creature. Riddick manages to stay within the beast's blind spot, but he's exposed to another creature that appears behind him. Carolyn goes back for Riddick when she hears him screaming. A a while later, Riddick turns up in front of her with a wound in his leg. As Carolyn helps him get up, a flying creature stabs her 
and takes her away. Soon, Riddick gets into the pilot seat and starts the engines. However, he decides to turn it off for a moment and wait for the creatures to approach them. Jack gets terrified as the beasts surround them, so she asks Riddick to fly the plane. As the creatures attempt to break into the ship, Riddick starts the engine, killing the beasts with the flame and the bright light from the exhaust. Upon reaching outer space, Riddick asks Jack to tell the authorities that he died on the planet. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.